All right, folks, here we are. We're in the book Revolt Against Maturity, chapter 34, Hope. So why don't we do the traditional thing? Oh, yes, it's by R.J. Rushdoony, by the by. So, yes. Thirty-four. Hope. Every culture represents a hope or a loss of hope. Man in society organises himself in terms of an expectation concerning life and the future, and as long as the hope survives, the culture is alive and growing. Civilizations crumble when men lose hope. The stagnation of Asia prior to its invasion by Western thought was due to the loss of hope. Philosophy and religion in Asia, in one culture after another, had lost hope and had succumbed to a world and life negation in its faith. The result was cultural decline and decay, and sometimes collapse, and the same symptoms are again apparent, this time in the humanistic societies of the Western world. Hope, elpis, is an important word and doctrine in the New Testament. It means a favourable and confident expectation. Hope means, first, the happy anticipation of good, as in Titus 1, 1 and 2, wherein St Paul declares, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. Before all creation, God's purpose included our eternal life, so that's our confident expectation rests on an eternal purpose which preceded our creation. We can thus joyfully look forward to the good God has purposed for us in confidence and faith. Second, Hope means the ground upon which hope is based, as in Colossians 1.27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ, the new man and the new life within us, is also the ground on which our hope is based. Our hope, thus, is as sure as its ground. This ground as that ground. is thus as sure as that ground. Third, hope also describes the objects upon which the hope is fixed, as in 1 Timothy 1.1. Jesus Christ, which is our hope. This usage is similar to that of Psalm 65.5, wherein David speaks of the God of our salvation, who are the confidence, or hope, as in Coverdale's translation, of all the ends of the earth, Hope for the Christian means all the promises of God concerning life in this world and in the world to come. When St Paul spoke of the three central graces or gifts of God to the believer, faith, hope and love, he thus declared that hope is not a human virtue in the believer, but a gift of God, 1 Corinthians 13. In the Old Testament, hope is often rendered as confidence or trust. The New Testament speaks of hope as an anchor of the soul, Hebrews 6.19, giving it stability in a changing world. The blessing it seeks are not limited to the future life, but include all that is promised to faith in the present life. The Gospels have less to say on hope than any other part of Scripture, because Christ's very presence concentrated so much attention on their present. His very presence concentrated so much attention on the present, on Christ himself as the hope of Israel itself. As noted earlier, civilizations begin to crumble when men lose hope. Roger Kipling, a far superior man than many who disdain him, foresaw the collapse of humanism. 
In his old age, in 1919, he described tellingly the coming collapse of humanism, its loss of hope and its devastation by its own follies and by God's judgment. As it will be in the future, it was at the birth of man. There are only four things certain since social progress began, that the dog returns to its vomit and the sow returns to her mire. Ah, hello. Pardon my French. That the dog returns to his vomit and the sow returns to her mire and the burnt fool's bandaged finger goes wobbling back to the fire and that after this is accomplished and the brave new world begins when all men are paid for existing and no man must pay for his sins as surely as water will wet us as surely as fire will burn the gods of the copybook headings with terror and slaughter return Humanism, having been built on a false hope, is inescapably doomed to disaster today, as always in the past. Hope is not only man in the present affirming a conviction about the future, about the future. Hope is not only man in the present affirming a conviction about the future, it is also the future acting on the present. Lukash has commented on this tellingly. We have to recognise the existential causality of human life, the relationships of human causes and human effects, which are different from the mechanical relationships of causes and effects that have been monopolising the concept of causality for at least 300 years now. Their categorical presumption has been that a cause must always precede its effect and that the same causes must necessarily produce the same effects, a presumption which Freud himself was incapable of transcending. Yet, for human beings, the very process of thinking on the conscious and also on the subconscious level complicates, disturbs and transforms the relationship of causes and effects, whereby this relationship becomes far more complex than the primitive, mechanical relationship of causes and effects in the outside world. Moreover, in human life, the cause of something may not always lie in the past, but in a vision of the future. This kind of purpose or cause exists in the future, not in the past. In any event, it resides within us, within our organism, of which our mind is an integral and not a separable part the kind of science that is incapable of thinking in other categories than in those of mechanical and therefore predictable and calculable causes and effects that has eliminated the notion of purpose from the world has not much more to tell us. Indeed, it is the principal agent of the destruction of nature and of man. The fact that during the past century or two socialists have believed that the future means socialism has been a case of the future determining the present. The momentum of socialism has been its offer of hope. Its growing crisis and coming collapse rests in the fact that it is a false hope. When post-millennial thinking has governed Christendom and the Church, the result has been the progressive conquest of all things for Christ, a hope concerning the future became the cause of that future. In a far more valid sense, we must therefore say that God's plan for the future is the cause of past, present and future, because with God, potentiality and actuality are one. All he has purposed from all eternity he does, and the beginning and the end are predestined and are woven together as a perfect and seamless garment. The Christian hope thus is the entrance into and the confirmation of the believer in the sovereign plan of the future by the omnipotent God. St. Paul describes this confirmation in Romans 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
by whom also we have access by faith into this grace where we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Justification means peace with God and opens up to us a world of grace and hope. It teaches us, moreover, to glory in tribulations, not in tribulations considered in themselves, but in their effects. In terms of Romans 8.28, we know that all things work together for our good in Christ. Tribulation worketh patience, and patience is a habit of endurance, and Christian patience implies submission to the will of God. The result of patience is experience, or in the Greek, doikime, meaning the process of proving or testing. Quote, the meaning here is proof, the testing and proving of faith. This testing and proving produces hope, a hope that does not disappoint us, but rather makes us bold in the face of all things, confident... Uh, hang on a second. There wasn't a quote there at all. Just going to have to make that uh, sound a bit odd. That's fine. It all sounds odd. Bold in the face of all things, confidence in the conquering power and triumph of Christ and his kingdom. The English word hope conveys in its origin something of the biblical sense also. It comes from the Old English, hopian, the late Old Norse hop, and it's related to the English hop. So that hope means a leaping or to leap with expectation. To hope, therefore, is to make a leap of faith with respect to the future. Only the Christian, with God's infallible word as his guide and assurance concerning that future, can make a valid leap of faith. His indeed is a hope that maketh not ashamed. To be without God is to make a false leap concerning the future, and thus finally to be robbed of any hope. St. Paul spoke of this aspect of the life of unbelievers, declaring that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. Ephesians 2.12 To be without God is finally to be without a valid hope and to be aliens and strangers from God's covenantal promises. Civilizations crumble when men lose hope, even though men may, as today, enjoy marked material advantages in the present. This is not surprising. Important as material advantages are by themselves, they cannot satisfy man's hunger for a hope that matches the purposes of God in creating man. As our Lord declared, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4.4 4. Man needs bread, but even more he needs the every word of God, for it alone is the word of certainty and the word of hope. Okay, in, in keeping with the, the theme, we're going to just end it there, ever so short that it may be. I think it is more better. I'm going to, yeah. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for um, making the tunes uh, and uh, yeah it's uh, if you want to support the work like share comment and uh, if you want to uh, support the work financially if you think it's worth supporting then do consider giving at www.nathanteacher.com forward slash donations so thank you and see you soon <laughs>